if you look a little bit into the history of the Earth System Sciences, the history of um, global change research in general, um, that was basically driven or evolving out of curiosity of how the climate is changing. That was in the early 80s. And then over the next few decades, it turned out that there's a lot of nonlinearities, feedbacks, feedback loops, which complicate the systems that we are actually seeing the world now as a social ecological system, a coupled system. And that means that humans play a critical role in the whole context. Humans are the reason for nonlinearities, for complex feedbacks. Humans are the reason for surprises. In other words, I mean, if we talk about management of the Earth system, we talk about managing people. So you need to get people into the center of your observation, into the center of your investigations, your explorations, in order to figure out what are the potentials for human society to adapt to global change, not just climate change, but global change, to see which parts of the human society are particularly vulnerable what are the capacities, the strategies that they might apply to actually adapt to changes or to mitigate? How do humans interact with nature? And that on a day-to-day -day basis. And what are the potentials for the future to do so if your natural system changes? If your coastal waters become more turbid, or if your deltas are subsiding, if your mega cities go down the drain, or if you cut off sediment fluxes from rivers that actually mean that delta regions such as Shanghai or other big mega deltas like Kolkata are actually going down. And uh, what does it mean in terms of sea level rise? What does it mean in terms of changes in precipitation on the high plateaus? And what does that mean for the water and hydrological cycle? All the life support system elements that human society is relying on, be it coastal, be it on the inland, doesn't really matter. Well, if you talk about collaboration, you probably refer to the Earth System Science programs, which are collaborating under the umbrella of the Earth System Science Partnership. And um, that is a contribution to ICSU's strategy, ICSU, the International Council for Sciences, which is basically a, a council of unions, scientific unions is trying to assist human society to basically deal with global change and cope with change that happens in the Earth system and the life support systems. Um, again, back to the very beginning when I said it all evolved, let's say, from a rather disciplinary viewpoint, it has turned out that we need to be very integrative now, interdisciplinary, and have to put humans into the central, con uh, central into the consideration of social ecological systems interactions. I think the collaboration you're referring to is quite appropriate and urgently needed to actually enable people and society and finally the decision making to make the right choices for the future. Mm -hmm. And making choices, that's what it is all about. I mean, if you talk about management, we talk about making choices out of a portfolio of different options. And these options need to be informed. In order to inform such options, you make sure that you get strategically those entities of scientific expertise together, which as a whole provide you to get a better info or allow you to get a better information base, a decision base, than if you would look at different disciplinary entities. Those, was the considera those were the, the strategies of the past, I guess. Mm -hmm. But in the future, we wouldn't get along without collab collaboration. Do you think we talk just about uh, say mobilizing the, the engagement of the science community or the engagement also of the science users. Well. Because that's, that's probably, it, 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 it needs to come together both because mm -hmm. change and action on change comes with a cost. Mm -hmm. It's like changing the tide. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if people realize, if decision making realizes, if society realizes that either acting or non-acting on certain pressures may at the end, after 10 years, 20 years, be more expensive than to, to take some action now, and this action is actually properly informed, mm -hmm. um, then I guess a process which evolves logically and a process which derives rather clearly and develops clearly the key issues of global societal concern and how, they are, how their implications are on regional and local scale 
may probably have potential to get the good buy-in also from the general public and from the decision making. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a mechanism, a means to actually come to some sort of a meaningful amalgamation of the scientific information base on the one end and the science users on the other and make that a more continuous process. That's a good question. <laughs> For the time being, the document which is out there does not necessarily refer directly to, to the answer you would expect to your question. Um, there are three things I could, I could think of to give you an answer on this question. One is that the visioning process currently puts upfront issues such as forecasting. So forecasting of what society is about to face over the next few years or decades or five years, whatever, is one means to actually do that. Uh, the second thing is continued observation. Observation that provides an image which is not just a temporary spot of how your social ecological system is functioning or responding to global pressures. That's the, the second thing. The third thing is probably not yet written and explicitly seen from within the document, which is basically that the scientific community itself, the research institutions, ICSU as such, is clearly thinking of what are the structures that we need to properly fulfill the function of informing society about the best options to choose. Delivering to the users and pick out of the scientific community that expertise, that critical mass of interdisciplinary collaboration that's needed to meaningfully answer a critical question and to do that on the appropriate scales. I mean, a climate model on a global scale with a resolution of, say, 300 by 300 kilometers pixel is fine, but what does it tell the coastal zone inhabitant or the farmer on the inland for his future strategies. So you need to scale down to regional or even local scale. That needs a totally different set of models, applications and communications. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where actually the interface is going to evolve in terms of providing scientific information services on a more continued basis that actually bridge between the world views of the users and the information needs of the users on the one end and the different scientific pools of interdisciplinary expertise on the other hand. Yeah, I think it's, it's one absolutely uh, critical element in the whole concept mm -hmm. of dealing with global earth system change. And I think informing society and providing options to choose um, can go down to household level, can go down to in individual decisions. Mm -hmm. I think that has a lot to do with what you just brought up, has a lot to do with awareness raising. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the concept of communication that needs to come with the science, communication across the traditional boundaries of peer-reviewed journals, for which scientists are credited, obviously. Uh, no, it needs to actually zoom into the day-to-day -day life of society and allow you to make choices because you feel better informed. Mm -hmm. And if you talk governance, that's how, how I and we in, in the Land Ocean Interaction Coastal Zone Project, LOIX, consider governance as a concept. Governance is not government and governance is not a certain institution, but it's probably a virtual space of market civil societies and government in which people evolve and develop their values along which they make decisions. And if you think it's a good thing to say, we don't want to use these, these high energy bulbs anymore, or we do not drive the car five times a week, but maybe only four, this is this kind of things, I, I mean, that has a lot to do with awareness raising. It has a lot to do with what kind of space and information base is in my governance room on which management, through which management can occur.